What's up guys? I am back with another F122 League Racing video. It's been about a month since we did one of these, and that's because we were in between seasons. You saw the last race of season six of um, of this league, which was the kind of multi-class race we did with a with the no assist division and then an assist allowed division in the same race, in the same lobby, on the same track. And I technically got a win in that race, but it was a pretty small no assist grid. So it maybe means a little less than on a full 20 man grid, but here we have the first race of Season 7, which is us back to just one grid, assists allowed. I think me and a couple other people are still using no assists. I know Hal, my teammate, is is using no assists. Uh, I think Sailor J143 is currently in 15th place, who you may have seen last season on the no assist grid. Pretty sure he's using no assists as well. And I think there may be one or two others, but I'm not positive about that and don't want to promise you either way because I just don't know what they're doing. But... I am just going to say, just going to give you my mindset going into this race. You saw the very end of my qualifying lap. I didn't show you the whole thing, but I, I qualified, I think, P16. And th that benefited from one guy actually getting a, a disqualification in qualifying because he apparently was parked in a dangerous place. That's uh, Kung Fu Panda. So I didn't really have a great qualifying and I really don't feel great at Bahrain ever I mean I, there are other tracks that I feel a lot better at we got Jeddah next and I'm hoping that I can do well there because I usually I usually feel pretty good at Jeddah I feel like it's a pretty good track of mine but Bahrain I never really feel that great but I felt decent I think coming into this race but it, it was very clear from qualifying that I didn't have a ton of pace that I wasn't going to be competitive for a win or anything and and I didn't expect to be I mean um, I'm not the fastest with no assists I, I lock up sometimes I suffer from not having the line I um, am maybe not as quick out of the corners as I should be uh, so um, the only thing I really have going for me overall is that I'm consistent which I think that I was pretty consistent in this race too which you'll which you'll see throughout but I felt okay going into this race, and I thought, hey, if I get a few lucky breaks, um, if, if a few people spin, if I can stay consistent and have decent pace, then maybe I can get into kind of like the top 12 range, top 10, top 12. I mean, uh, points were not something I expected, but something that I thought was possible. Top 12 was really something that I thought, hey, if this if this all goes my way, I could get top 12, I could do this. And from the beginning, I think we're off to a pretty good start here. So I started P16. I'm now up to P14 on the second lap. And I'm really just trying to stay consistent, just staying behind guys and and just being cognizant of where I am on the track. And, and I will also say I planned from the beginning to go soft medium, one-stop strategy, which is unpopular in, in league racing 50% races. I don't know if this is just a, if this is a setup thing or, or driving style thing or what, but... I found in, in prepping for this race that the soft medium was a faster strategy for me and I didn't lose grip to a level that made it difficult to drive. So I thought this is something that I can certainly do. And and of course, you know, you never know what's going to happen with safety cars. So it definitely could be a bit of a curveball and could throw me off my strategy. But we're hoping that I can go to about lap 10 on the softs and then change over to the mediums and and overall save a little bit of time. I don't know that I'm going to save a ton of time, but in prepping, in prepping and doing some prep race runs, I found that the soft to medium strategy for me with this setup was about uh, 20, 20 ish seconds faster than a, than a medium hard strategy and um, 10 to 15 seconds faster than a, than a soft hard strategy. So I felt like soft medium was the way to go, and after the race, I don't think that that was a bad decision. Of course, I'll let you watch the rest of the race, but I do think that it probably makes sense for me. And I, I wonder if I'll maybe do a little bit more of that throughout this season, because I do think that's one area where maybe I can gain a little bit of time just from being on better tires than guys. If I'm not gonna get, if I'm not gonna get the tire wear that would require me to run a medium hard strategy or a two stop strategy, then maybe I should stick on these soft medium strategies and. Just try to capitalize on whatever opportunities I get. But you saw me, uh, I think it was last lap, I let my teammate Hal through, or earlier this lap maybe, you, I let my teammate Hal through. I didn't want to hold him up at all. I knew that he certainly was going to be faster than I am, and I didn't didn't want to battle him. I 
was happy to let him go. I passed the incident when he spun out a bit. Steven AJ1125 passed me, but I am within DRS range of him, and I don't think that he is absurdly faster than I am. I don't think he's got absurdly higher pace, so I'm hoping I can stick with him. Maybe see if he makes a mistake, and I can take a position out of it. But we were pretty close together for a couple corners there, racing pretty tightly. And you see me go down the inside here and get actually pretty close and... And kudos to him. He was. We had very respectful racing right here. Uh, it was, you know, there were, wasn't any bumping. It was just kind of good, good, clean racing, and it was fun. I really enjoyed it. It was fun, and um, I do wonder if I if I'll see him more on the track this year because it seems like our paces are kind of similar to each other. But I go. I miss the apex a bit on that turn, and he's able to do a bit of a switch back and take the position away from me. So good for him. Nice little run there. And it looks like I'm probably not going to be able to catch him unless I can maybe give a bit of a run uh, moving forward on one of these turns coming up or maybe this DRS zone. Fast forward a bit to the end of this DRS zone and I did not, I was not able to catch him, but I do feel Moose coming behind me uh, very quickly. I mean, he's, he's on the hards, but he's faster than I am. He gets a better entry and exit into that turn and he pretty easily takes that position away from me. But what I didn't know is that Whizbang was over there too. So Whizbang and Moose are both both trying to pass me at the same time. And uh, Moose kind of got stuck in the middle of that, but was able to pass me going into that turn. So all in all, for me, that was, that was not a good two-turn stretch. I didn't get any damage though, so I think that's a positive. And I'm hoping that I can kind of chase these guys along a little bit with some DRS. Um, especially with me being on the softs and Moose being on the hards. I think he's faster than I am, but I wonder if maybe I can I could stick with him and stay within DRS range and maybe save a little bit of battery because I've been using a ton of battery up to this point in the race. And I'll just note here, I mean, there was a lot happening in these opening laps. We're only on lap seven, and this is over seven minutes of video, which is... Generally, you would expect that with, with that much time into the video that we're quite a bit further into the race. But I'm telling you, there was a lot of great battling here. And I was in close proximity to a lot of cars for the for the first maybe half of this race. So um, it, was, it was really good racing overall. Everything you've seen, I think, has been good. And there were some incidents, some reports. But for the most part, I think... Uh, the the return to a larger grid has not resulted in a lot of incidents. I mean, there are other there are other factors, of course, uh, with a larger grid. But you would expect more incidents generally. But we only had um, well, I won't spoil it. But this is not like a race that we had a couple of seasons ago, where we had I think five or six safety cars in a 50% race at Jeddah. So, I mean, that's just sloppy racing. It's not fun. Nobody enjoys it. Steven cut across me a, a little bit there. And I didn't, I didn't report that. I don't think there was anything really to report because I did back out of it. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to, love to hear what people think about that. But I felt that he did cut across the front of my car a little bit, and it, um, I would have had to go off track to sort of, to sort of keep myself in the fight. But Stephen AJ eleven twenty five and Turtle Commander both passing me there on lap nine, and I am back to fifteenth place after benefiting from some people in front of me pitting. And Howe is coming up behind me as well. So um, we're, we don't have great pace on track. I've been very consistent, but we don't have great pace. And I was a little bit discouraged at this point in the race. I'm thinking I'm just going to get passed by people throughout the race. And it's just it's just kind of unfortunate, right? You'd rather it be a little better than that. But lap 10 here, my teammate Howe is in front of me. And you get a great view of him of him getting a little spin, going straight into the wall, getting the DNF, which is unfortunate. He's obviously a very fast racer. We've seen him get great results in this league on this channel, and it was unfortunate. You know, I always hate for him to get knocked out of a race, especially because uh, I like him and he's my teammate, but he, um, I think he got some bad luck throughout this race, so it, it may have been a, a bit of a merciful, a merciful killing, and I think maybe he was... Um, He's probably frustrated. I saw him. I, I saw him um, get knocked off the track uh, at least one or two other times. I think so. Um, just an unfortunate day overall for him. 
not to be not to be insensitive, but the, the safety car worked out really well for me. The timing on that was absurdly good um, because I was planning to pit on lap ten anyway. So um, t to go from the soft to the mediums, that was just that was perfect timing, and um, and I was really happy with that, and that was great. But fast forward a bit here to lap fifteen after the safety car, and I'm behind Kung Fu Panda. Who, who at this point has disconnected and he, he rejoins in short order here, but um, he's just, he's not, he's not fast and I'm suffering from the fact that I'm stuck behind him and I, I'm trying my best to get by him, but I just don't have the raw pace to really jump him. So I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm floating around a bit. I'm trying to, trying to stay and stay and get past him because I'd like to stay in the race and It'd be great if I could pass him because then he's his um, AI is going to be holding up Ghost and, and Steven behind me. So um, I really need to get by him. And I'm a little impatient to get by him. And honestly, it's it's just the, the braking behavior is just a little bit odd on the AI. And you saw it right there. I almost hit the back of him and kind of had to go wide to avoid him. And here you get a bit of the same thing. I, I sort of faint inside and then... I had to break a little harder than I would like, and I get rear-ended by ghosts. So, again, this is a situation where I'd really like to hear what, what the viewer has to say and, and see what people thought about that little incident there. But in my mind, I don't think that I did anything wrong. I think I was, I was staying kind of respectful of the distance to the car in front of me. But unfortunately, I just waste a ton of time there, and I get passed by multiple people and just... Uh, it's it's really a race ruiner, you know, and and not to say that I wouldn't get passed by some of these guys anyway, but I essentially wasted I don't know 20 seconds there um, with that little incident, and I, I, it just felt like maybe that could have that could have costed me you know two or three positions maybe in the long run. We'll have to look at where the times end up, but I thought I ran a really consistent race overall. And again, not the fastest, but I stayed on track. I I stayed smart, and and I'm proud of my consistency, you know. But oh, also this is a little thing that bothered me. I couldn't figure out why I missed my breaking point two or three laps in a row there. I don't know if you saw it, but the 150 marker has been destroyed, which is really unfortunate. And it only happens I find when racing with guys who use the racing line, because um, if you're not using the racing line you need the braking markers, right? And you're going to go out of your way to not hit them, at least in my experience. So uh, it's really unfortunate when you're racing with racing line guys who don't really seem to care about that as much. And I don't even know how you run into that 150 braking marker. Um, get pushed off the track? I don't know. But it it was a big impact for me. And uh, my race was pretty much over. But it, <laughs> it took some time away uh, having to get the braking point right. And I didn't even notice for a couple laps. But... I end up in P15 here, not my greatest race, not my worst race, but I think there are some good things to take away from it. I do think I was consistent. I think that I was smart. I was a little frustrated because I did get hit in the back of the car and got some rear ring damage that affected me throughout the race, and I didn't really feel like it was my fault. So it was a bit unfortunate, but I think maybe we can we can just try to improve on this and, and come back for the next race. But overall, I think this was a dis disappointing outing, and I hope to do better in the future.